looking specifically at how children communicate with each other and how the stages of play impact on their communication. Let's get started. Exploratory play. Exploratory play is what we see in the very youngest children, typically in the baby room. They're exploring, they're in the sensory motor stage of development, and they're all about exploring through their senses, taste, touch, sight, smell, and hearing. So thinking about the kind of resources that we would want to provide, they would essentially be sensory resources. As you can see in this picture, they're playing with schmutters or fabric. Moving into solitary play, which is really kicks in from a year upwards. It's solitary play is between a year and two years and even into um, even into the second year sometimes. So solitary play essentially is where the child plays on their own. As you can see in this picture, they're not really um, interacting with those people around them. And quite often during solitary play stage, children will see other children as other play objects rather than other people to play with. That comes much later in their development. So up until two years, solitary play is really the predominant play that children will display. This is their main stage. During this period, children will often refer to themselves by name rather than saying I. They might say Sammy Biscuit. That might mean Sammy wants a biscuit or I want a biscuit, for example. But this is typical of this stage that they refer to themselves by their name. They're possessive, so um, sharing is something that is definitely not age appropriate in the solitary play phase and um, the things that are theirs are really theirs. They possess them and um, they're quite possessive about their belongings and whatever it is that they're playing with. Um, children in the solitary play stage are easily frustrated. This is why we see grabbing, why we see sometimes tears, frustrated faces, uh, but that is typical for children that are in the solitary play phase. And of course, they are completely self-centered. They have themselves at their the centre of um, their universe and they have little concept of other people or what it means to be outside of themselves. So what it means to be another person. They certainly can't see things from other people's points of view. So the idea of forcing a child to say sorry or asking him, do you know what it feels like for him, would be a completely arbitrary and very odd thing to do in that phase because it is just not consummate with their stage of development. Okay, so moving on, thinking about parallel play. In parallel play, as you can see in these two pictures, children may very well be playing with exactly the same things in the sand tray, on the construction table, at the um, train track, but they are playing independently. So the slide tells us when a child will often play alongside another child and show some awareness that the other child is there, but they won't share in each other's activities. They don't cooperate with each other. They tolerate each other. There might be some observation. They might look at each other, um, but they certainly don't share and they certainly don't cooperate, but they play alongside each other. And this is typical. Here's another example here of two children Alexis and Maya playing alongside each other there with the Play-Doh, okay? So during parallel play, children will enjoy being near other children, but as I've already said, not necessarily playing with them. Um, they can take it in turns. Say here, for example, there was only one, um, one um, rolling pin, 
Uh, they may be able to get on with other things while they're waiting for their uh, turn to use the rolling pin. Um, but turn taking certainly doesn't typify parallel play. Um, by the time that they are in this stage, generally they'll know if uh, they're a boy or a girl or something in between. And uh, they're more secure at this stage and less resistant to change. So obviously when they're younger, change is easier for them than by the time they're in the parallel play stage. They are more resistant to change, okay? And then moving on to about two and a half years old, this is where we see the introduction of associative play. And um, children here will start to play together. And generally this is characterized by watching and then copying. So it's not really cooperative. They're not doing things to help each other during their play. But there is certain, certainly more involvement with their peers. And as you can see from both of these full, um, pictures, here in the first one there, Tom is sorting bricks and playing with bricks. And I think they're washing things there. And they are um, observing each other and... Um, copying each other as they're doing that. And then you can see in the other photo with um, Ori and Matan, they are, they've got ice play there and you can see Matan there looking over to Ori. And that's definitely an example of associative play. And do bear in mind that these age ranges are a guide. It won't be the same for every children. Children do develop at their own pace. And some children will move in and out of these phases at slightly different ages and may display characteristics, for example, of um, associative play while they are still in the parallel play stage. So um, it's not that suddenly one day they're now two and a half and they move from one stage to the other. They will start to display characteristics of that. Um, before they fully move into that stage. And of course, even once they're in the associative play stage, there may still be times where they are playing alone, back to the solitary play period or parallel play. Okay, so just sticking here with associative play for a moment, turn taking and sharing starts to kick in at this stage. And certainly from age three, play can become more complex and simple rules can start to be used. So here you can see a small group of children in the kindergarten um, <coughs> or is there <coughs> sorting shapes onto the tray that they have as part of a game with simple rules. <coughs> Cooperative play this is really the final stage of play where children do really start to actively play together. And certainly you can see here, um, I've chosen this picture as a, as a funny example, but <coughs> pardon me, but it really does highlight how they need to move their legs in tandem with each other in order to make that game work. And you can see this is really an example of cooperative play. Other examples might include building a tower together or playing a game together um, that involves turn taking. So children in the three to four age phase will play cooperatively with, with each other and they will enjoy <laughs> other children's company. Um, they can play by this age organized games. Um, and they're more sure of themselves. They're more comfortable in their own skin. They know what they like. They have preferences. And they become talkative also at this stage. They may also be defiant if there is something that they don't like. And of course, by age five, here you can see Eddie, IG, Nathan with Bill there in the background, um, really in a friendship group and by age five this is where friendship groups really do start to form um, and they enjoy games and they're able to follow rules more consistently at this age um, and they also enjoy having responsibility by the time they're age five 
Um, and there's some, and they begin to become capable of self-criticism. Oh, I didn't do that very well. I could do that better, and and start to understand that. So, what can we do to help? Well, supporting children to develop impulse control is certainly one way that we can help. And let's have a think about how we can do that. So, for the younger children, we can certainly help them to develop some of the language skills that they need to describe their actions their thoughts and their feelings. So naming feelings is something that's very important here. We could ask questions, reflective questions. Chantelle, you're looking angry. Are you feeling angry now? Is that an angry face? And as the children start to get older, suggest phrases to express anger. I don't like it when you do that. Please don't squish my ears like that help the children to develop the language that they need to dis talk to the other children about their dissatisfaction, uncomfort, or even anger at certain things, and help children to find their own solutions to things such as turn-taking or sharing. Try not to dictate, but try to help them to find solutions for themselves. And do um, explain reasons behind rules why they're there, make sure rules are not arbitrary. That will definitely help children with understanding. And consequences when um, rules are not followed. Okay, let's just think about this then for a second. Antoine is age two and he's playing with a truck. When another child grabs it off of him, Antoine screams, No! While hitting the other child. Is this age appropriate? Yes, it is. This is behaviour that we would expect from a typical two-year-old in their stage of development. So, when we're dealing with this, we can think back to some of these strategies that we've just looked at, helping children, for example, name their feelings, but we will do that within the context of knowing this action is a normal part of development. Okay, um, let's just think now about a socially competent child. This is a child who is developing well and is socially able. They expect a positive response when approaching others. That's other children, including adults. And of course, they won't always get a positive response when approaching others, especially other children. Um, and that can lead to upset. But again, that's normal and natural. They will assert their own needs and rights appropriately. So, starting to use language about, that's mine, you can't play with it. I'm playing with this now, you play with that later. And even while they still have emergent language, there's ways to communicate without using words. Um, a socially competent child will start to express feelings of anger and frustration more effectively and in ways that are more socially acceptable. And socially competent children will take turns pretty easily by the time they reach this stage. They'll have really strong relationships with one or two peers. And um, they'll gain access to ongoing groups at play. So they'll join groups while they're playing as well. Um, and they'll negotiate and compromise with others appropriately. And you're really looking at age five for a socially competent child who is developing well across the developmental norms.